And Alice, it's time for you to have a question. <laughs> Probably you did want to compose from the very beginning. You certainly played piano at the beginning. Well, actually, um, definitely, I know my answer is when I was uh, brought up in Hong Kong, and I have a little bit similar situation like Kanin. Before I uh, enter university, I want to be a doctor. So I study very hard, and of course, I'm not good enough. I'm not accepted at medical school. But in fact, I get a scholarship to study at Indiana in music. Whoa. So uh, I was accepted as a piano major. But then I had to choose a minor, either conducting or composition. Oh, you made the wrong choice. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Think of the money you could have made. <laughs> exactly. So um, I, I, I thought... Uh, composition would be a bit easier than conducting. Oh, so that's not I was, a very um, Hong Kong approach. Yes, it right. is a Hong Kong approach. <laughs> <laughs> so, and, and that uh, took off from there. I, I met my teacher, my first teacher at Indiana, John Eaton, and he was very supportive. Wow. And, um, and, and then I uh, met my husband at Indiana, and we married. We moved to um, Toronto, and I studied with uh, um, John Beckwith. He's in the audience tonight. And he was my professor when I do my master there. And so there goes the story. I am uh, now working as a composer. Now, when you were in Hong Kong, as you know, I've been there quite a few times. You have to look a bit to find traditional Chinese music. It's not right in front of your face. Mm -hmm. So did you find that when you were writing pieces which show... Uh, they show a, a very, very sensitive Chinese influence. Did you look for that later, or did you just feel that it, it was a part of your upbringing when you were there? It is an interesting question, because I was lucky. Actually, uh, my childhood, I was, uh, I'm living with my grandparents, and my grandparents are both very keen into Peking opera and Cantonese okay. opera. So I saw a lot of, um, you know, excerpts and, 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 you know, practice. But of course, when I was small, I don't really understand what it is about. But my grandmother always explained to me the scenario. And a lot of interesting things is about the female characters are always a very strong character, but they always suffered. No, no matter they are beautiful or they are not beautiful, they are always have to rise from the situation. Isn't that the same in every opera? <laughs> <laughs> and um, so um, when I came to Toronto, I, I think I'm very lucky. I have, uh, especially in the last uh, five, six years, I met so many marvelous artists, uh, very multicultural, like, um, you know, to like uh, William Lau. Uh, actually, I, I don't know him before. He, he, I was introduced to him by another party from uh, the Newfoundland Symphony, uh, Peter Gardner. Uh, talk about fate. He met William in a conference, and Peter met me when my piece was performed in Banff, and his idea is to hook me and William up to do a project together. So um, William sent me a few uh, video. Uh, of uh, Mei Lan Fang. I think in the Chinese audience, you may know Mei Lan Fang is one of the most legendary, uh, famous uh, Peking opera artists in China in the mid 30s and 40s. Um, in that time, all the female roles are played by men, but they are absolutely gorgeous. And every move they made, every gesture is very artistic. And, and then I start to appreciate uh, you know, every finger gesture, the makeup, the expression is so suggestive. It's almost like mine. And I can totally relate. If it is coming with, uh, you know, uh, the, uh, the uh, picking opera aspect, go with new music would be just fantastic. So with this um, uh, inspiration, and I come up with the, uh, the piece tonight, which turned out to be a very long piece. I, I, I was thinking in the uh, format, uh, even of a ballet, I have an overture which introduce and prepare the dancing and also give you the, um, the sense of the drama that's coming up. 
And the first scenario is drunken beauty is the excerpt I taken from Mei Lan Fang. It's about this aging concubine in the um, Tang uh, dynasty. Um, she, was, um, she was having a date with the emperor. But you know, at that time, the emperor has many concubines and maybe one or two queens. About how many? I think that I, I heard, you know, they can sleep with 300, <laughs> like every night and, and, and sometimes a couple in the night. But anyway, uh, they were having a I date. I wonder what their diet was. <laughs> Where can we get some of that stuff? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they were having a date. So the, um, um, uh, the, this beautiful concubine was preparing all these lovely wines and she was uh, in the garden and fascinating with, you know, butterflies and, and, you know, the lake and all the romantic scenarios, anticipating the emperor will come. But of course, she was stood up. And at the end, she got mad, she kept drinking, and she was drunk. And she just has to be asked she, because she misbehaved so badly at the end. And this is a very famous um, uh, picking opera scenario and very traditional. And the other one, which I'm based on, is the female warrior Again, it's a story about, um, I think it's the uh, Song Dynasty. It's a very extraordinary character. It's a female. And she is the first female general who trained, like actually brave enough to train the villagers to fight against the enemy in the north, I heard. So this excerpt is about, she was putting up her armor, showing off her military skills, and she is beautiful, she's enjoying him herself. And the, the, the catch is she actually fell in love with the enemy's general. And, and I don't know whether this is a myth, but uh, it was um, a legend that she actually captured the general and the general became her husband. Ooh, dirty tricks again. <laughs> that sounds like Valentine's so. Day. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a happy ending. It's a happy ending. So the exop is not about the fighting. It's about, you know, when she is uh, showing off her skills and displays her various, you know, um, uh, swords and, and, you know, feathers and various things. What is fascinating is to think of somebody thinking of that story and then writing music that they feel tells that story or relates to it. Huh? Music is amazing, isn't it? Or rather, the composers are amazing, I think, to imagine that they can actually do that. You know? And I think that you, certainly with William's help, you certainly have succeeded. Well, 